Welcome back to another episode of Be A Better Game Dev. In this episode we are going to be delving into the world of debugging again, but this time we're going to be focusing on UI. We're going to be making use of the widget reflector, which allows us to debug UI elements and see what is going on, what are the properties, and generally give us an ability to troubleshoot any issues that we might have with our UI elements. So let's check it out. Here we are inside of the UI Material Lab. This is a free project available on the Epic Marketplace. You can either download it and toy around with it if you want to, or you can watch my video on the topic if you want to learn a little bit of what it contains. This is what we will be using as sort of our demonstration stage for this debug today. Uh, this time I'm using Unreal Engine version 5.3. If you're using a different version, even Unreal Engine 4, you should be fine. It's going to be very similar how this works out. So, me, coming from a software engineer background, I strongly feel that one of the most important skills in software development is the ability to debug. So that is why we today will be taking our debugging skills to an area I like to toy around with, which is user interfaces. So, to get started, the tool we are going to make use of today is called the Widget Reflector. You can start this tool either by holding down Ctrl, Shift and W, or by going to Tools, Debug and Widget Reflector. So. This tool now, the first thing that we have is application scale, you see up here in the top left. This actually changes your Unreal Engine UI. So if you wanted to have your Unreal Engine UI smaller or larger, this is actually a place where you can change that. So before going further, we probably either want to dock this window in the top or bottom, uh, because we are going to be showing a lot of information in this window. So we're going to be wanting it to be kind of wide. Um, so. Continuing now then, what is this all about? Well, the centerpiece of this is this button here. So <clears throat> here we can choose to select any widget that is hit testable. So clicking this button will show that we can press escape. You can see here, escape to stop uh, at any time when we want to stop it to evaluate a widget. So moving our cursor over something here, we can see that anything that is hit testable appears with a lot of information down in our window, right? So if we were to go, let's say I press escape and I click over to applications and go to something a little bit more fancy and I click pick hit testable, hit testable window, you can see that I get this shield, for example, here now. I can see a bunch of information. If I press escape, it can go up here. We can see that we have a bunch of things here. We have a, a hierarchy of widgets, we have some visibility, we have focus, we have clipping, we have source and an address, all right? So all of this is available to us now. So um, this information is a little bit much, right? So uh, even though this is a bit much, you want to probably make sure that you have widget details checked as well, uh, because this opens up this window over here, which shows us details of the widget that we have chosen as well. So in this case, it is this widget over here then. Now, um, how do we make use of this information? Well, if we go to filter here, for example, we can say UMGS root. Clicking UMGS root allows us to see a widget hierarchy here. Uh, this widget hierarchy is a little bit easier to read. If we were to go to our button here that is pressed, we can go to our link over here. We can actually open up the widget class that belongs to this widget that we have selected. So doing so, we can get our class open. There we go. So this is the icon that is actually being uh, used for this particular element over here. And this is good because if we want to like check, okay, what is part of this uh, UI structure is this actually running, then you can just click on that link again over here and you open up the class that it is corresponding to. So here we can see the information that we have and this information is also partly shown in uh, our details over here. Now, in addition to this, you can also go to filter and say you want to use selected node as root. This will bring you down and show the hierarchy from the actual node that you had marked. So in this case, we have this marked and under it we just have a null widget content uh, but if we feel that at some point we 
maybe chose a little bit too narrowly in our selection, we can always just use these breadcrumbs up here to go further back in our structure. We can go up to the button or the image or the overlay. And you can see that as you open them up, you have more and more available to you in the structure below them, right? So you can see also when I click on these specific elements here, there are parts that are being lit up uh, down below. If we go to the uni grid, uniform grid panel, for example, we can see that we actually have all of these four different widgets. We have the, the dagger and the potion and the shield and the axe. All right. So now we know a little bit of how we can navigate around this, right? Uh, well, in addition to this, um, we may want to understand, well, what kind of problems can we find with a debug tool like this? Well, the obvious ones are things like you are expecting to see something uh, and you're not, right? So you maybe have a setting that's improper. So by going and clicking on, on your widget here and then going to escape, you can actually see, okay, well, is it visible? Is it hidden? Is it focused? Is it clipping? Is, is the, the hit testable set to invisible? Things like that, right? So you can see that th there is a inconsistency in what you are expecting to see. If you have a widget switcher, you can see in the, uh, the hierarchy here that it's showing something else than you're expecting and such, right? So it's generally about displaying all the information that's available to you uh, regarding a UI widget so that you can possibly see that something is wrong, right? But there are other occasions as well when this is useful. Uh, if we, for example, something that's very common, uh, if you were to have a widget that you are expecting to click on and something is supposed to be happening, but nothing is actually happening, let's actually uh, emulate that by going into the widget. So we, we click on this, we go escape, we open up the class. Inside of this, we have few elements, we have a button and a frame. So if we were to go to the button and say, instead of visible, we're gonna be hit not testable or not hit testable, and then do the same for the frame, for example. Uh, let's see here, where do we have uh, visibility over there? And then we compile and save. Close this, we run this again, and we go to applications and we go here and we say, okay, pick hit testable objects. If I move over here now, nothing is actually being shown, right? If we press escape, we can see that we have self hit test invisible on objects here above us. And we, we might be thinking, well, why, why is this not working? Well, the button over here is by default set to be uh, pick hit testable widgets, like I said in the beginning. You can change this to be pick painted widgets, which will not be that selective in its selection. So if we were to go now, for example, you can see that we actually can hover over these objects. We can press escape and we can see that this specific frame here, self hit test invisible. And that's why we wouldn't be able to click it if we were in the application itself, right? Anyway, hopefully at this point, you are convinced that this is a tool that you should be making use of to improve your UI troubleshooting because this allows you to get a plethora of information that you normally might be a little bit uh, obfuscated when you're uh, playing around with your UI elements, right? But now with this at your fingertips, you have pretty much all the information that you need and it should greatly improve your ability to troubleshoot any issues that you have. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.